And hello, I'm Wackgasm, and this is, hopefully my camera's working. Okay, it is. This is Veal Wraith. This is the second vignette. I did the first vignette on a previous play, so you can go to my channel and watch the first one if you want. So I know I made one or two small rules mistakes last time I played, so hopefully this time I will have less rules mistakes. At least that's the hope. That's the dream anyway. So yeah, we're gonna be playing through a little bit of this because the, I don't know if it's considered a sequel or spiritual successor, but a Creel Manor is coming out, which is another game that uses, I believe it uses a similar system as this. So I wanted to play through a little bit of this, maybe get through the whole campaign uh, and see, you know, see if I enjoy it or not. And then before I move on to the second one, or maybe I'll play through, you know, a few sessions of this and then try the other one to see if I can compare the two. But this is a 20 session campaign, maybe more if you lose, which, you know, I feel like I probably will at some point. I don't think I lost last time, but yeah, I guess let's just get started with the game. And if you have any questions, please uh, leave me a comment below. I'm trying to get to 300 subscribers by the end of the year. It's currently October. I had to take a I hate hi quick hiatus on recording and then I recorded, I knew I was gonna be taking a second hiatus. So I recorded this ahead of time, but this is probably going up like way later than it's actually being recorded. Just because I know that I have some personal freelance project stuff going on that's interfering with my ability to record, but I will be back to hopefully a more normal schedule sometime in October. At the time you're watching this in October, I have from October to December to try to get to 300 subscribers. That's my goal. Hopefully I can make it, we'll see. I'm also going to, at some point, try to do one or two of these live and we're gonna see if we can make that happen. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to, but we will try. All right, so let's get started. Let's kind of take a look at what's going on. A little bit rusty with some of my setup here, but it is what it is. And I still feel like I'm never gonna figure out my mic issues and I'm also realizing right now that something's going on with the light that I have set up here that's reflecting directly off this one card. There we go, maybe that's a little bit better. All right, well, hopefully I can figure that out. Maybe I can just move this over here for now. Maybe that's easier to see. Okay, yeah, that's a lot easier to see. All right, so we are doing Vignette 2. This is in the uh, nesting woods. So I guess let's take a look and see what's going on here. These are all the enemies that are at the top. I don't know how clear that is for you guys on the screen, but we have an enforcer, an Aramite, fighter, goblin, healers, nymphs, and pariahs. Some of these enemies we've seen before, some of them are new. We got one upgrade in our deck, which where did I put my deck? Is this my deck? Yeah, this is my this is my deck right here. I guess I'll just cover it again. I already shuffled this during the setup, but I kind of realized now that maybe you might want to know what upgrade I took. So I don't actually remember if I recorded that part of the process last time. I took Memory of Sorrow, which basically return a threat to, to play to the top of the threat deck. I took this thinking that the foe, or not the foe, the threat that lets you find keys would come out, but I don't think that threat's in this one. So not really sure if that was a good pick for an upgrade, but it's what I went with. So that's what's happening. So this vignette has a special power associated with it as well. It has the power of Silk. Flipped keys also add one power token to influence. So that's something that I have to remember to do. So I have this little token here to remind myself. Other than that, we are going to get started. Uh, again, there's not really that much story. I think I said last time that the theme for this game is not intuitive, at least for me. You can kind of cover it again super quick, but we are veal wraiths and we are in the Vana, which is like the seared lands that has been left behind after the end of all things. Everything's fragmented memories and there's trap souls trying to break through the shattered veil. There's pages and animas and keys and memories. And yeah, I don't know. I don't really fully, I don't know, maybe I'm just not super smart, but I don't fully get the theme, but it does have a lot of nice artwork, although the artwork feels also kind of misplaced. I don't know. I like the artwork. I just don't fully understand it, I guess. But I do know we are in the nesting woods. And in order to get through the gates when the portal or the portal when it comes out, we're going to need an explorer of four. And we have three foes this time. And they are in the second, third, and fourth part of the stack. I have them create five piles. 
to get mixed in there. So I kind of have some expectation of when they're going to show up. That is that. All right. So I just realized I moved this. So now I don't know. I might turn myself off again because I feel like this is going to fall. I moved my camera and now this, this isn't lined up. So anyway, hopefully I end up being in frame for some of this, but yeah, I'll have to fig figure that out hopefully next time. Let's get started. So we start by revealing a threat. That's the first thing that we do right here. And the first threat is a Aramite and basically balance when played, I discard one pow power token. So luckily, luckily I don't have any power tokens out, so I don't have to, um, now I also could have set these up in any order, but I'm just still using the default way the instructions set up. There's like an advanced one where if I wanted to start like this, I could have, but I'm just sticking with this for what it is. This particular threat has multiple ways to get rid of it. So I could do a fight three and explore four or an influence. So, or an influence four, I just need to do any one of those three to get rid of it. And all right, so that's that. We, we drew our threat, we activated its played ability. There was no power tokens, so we're good there. So now we're going to draw our first memory. And our first memory is I can use one additional available action if I want to. I, I should probably slide all this up so you guys can see what, what I have in my hand. That might be useful. So let's do that. All right, so we'll keep this here just so it's visible. And then now I can play in any order. I could use my actions. I can tap stuff. Also, I have 20 health. I guess we'll put that right here. And I guess let's just get started. So I think the simple thing to do is to, to get a power token on it. And then I will use this or tilt it to get a power token on it. And then I will use this to draw one memory because I don't have enough to influence it right now anyway. And I don't want to use this to be able to do that. So when I do that, I'm going to draw a card. This is the new card I drew, a memory of home. It just gives me one explorer if I decide to use it. And then this is going to slide up. This is going to slide down. And then, sorry, just reminding myself how this goes. Loaded five power tokens per action. Okay. I don't have any keys. Can't do anything with that. So now comes the spirit phase when I lose spirit. This guy basically just makes me lose one spirit right here. So because I didn't remove him on the first turn, I'm down to 19 spirit. Not much I can do about that. I have to discard down to six memories. I have two right here, so I do not have to do that. It's a tiny bit more. And then we reset everything. So this is going to get reset here. All right. Hopefully that's good enough for, for what's going on. And then, yeah, that's end of round. There's no end of round abilities. So now a new round begins. So very quick round. So now we are going to start with a new threat. This time we have an enforcer. This is another, again, I don't know if the keywords ever matter, but this is a Deja grapple when played. I remove one power token from my fight action. So of course, so I had this for my fight action, it gets removed, but I guess that's not the end of the world. It just means that I can't target the thing that I want to target. Then I'm going to draw one memory into my hand and I can ignore a spirit cost of negative one threat this round. So we'll probably just use that right away. And uh, yep, so I'm going to use my fight action, which is a three, and we are going to just kill off this enforcer because he only requires three fight to get rid of. This is going to slide up. And I think for now we will just put a power token then on this explorer instead and that's all I will do for my turn. I will be taking one point of damage. I will just use this to negate point. I'm not sure if that's the best usage, but I will do it since why not? Maybe I should be holding on to that so I could use two memories to, to boost something if I need it. But for now, that's what we're doing. So he stays out. Everything gets reset. I discard down, but I don't need to. And that's it for the turn. So we're going to do another threat. This is a nymph. I think this one's a new one. I don't think we've seen this one before. Distract when played. Remove one power token from your explore action. Okay, so this keeps kind of compounding on me a little bit. Not really getting lucky with that. I guess if I had these threats memorized, I would kind of know what to expect a little bit. Um, 
that is that. So I now can't use my explorer to take care of them. So I'm gonna end up. I'm gonna probably. Yeah. Well, actually, I can still take care of of one of them this turn. So first, draw a card. See what I get. I get the memory of knowledge. Swap the position of any two actions. So I'll put that here. And yeah, I'm just gonna simply take the explore action. And I'm going to use my memory of home, which gives me plus one to the explorer. That will let us target this guy who goes away with an, with explore four, as you can see right there. So they are gone. We'll slide them down, and that means this is gonna this is gonna go down. And I don't know. I feel like it is risky to put it on the fight, but we're gonna put it on the fight. Maybe that's the trap in this game. Maybe trying to constantly put it on fight will get it removed from the threats that are coming out but we'll see what happens and uh, that's it that's all i'm going to do for the turn this memory is going to go away this is going to reset and i'm going to take one spirit damage because the nymph does one spirit damage for the turn yeah i'm not sure why it's cheap all right so that's it for the turn so we will draw a new threat and this is a pariah. This is an outcast on defeat. I can I have to place this in my discard pile. So basically, this ends up being like a like a dead card in my hand. This requires only one influence to, to get rid of, so it's not too not too hard to remove. But if I leave them out, I will take two spirit damage. So probably we'll be going after them next. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. And all right, so I'm going to draw another card. This one is basically heals me for one. So we'll hold on to this for now. We'll use it when we need to. We don't need to yet. So yeah, I'm simply going to use this influence, this pariah, and he goes into my discard. So that when I draw him later, basically nothing happens. I just discard it. And then also makes this deck a little bit thinner because again, one of the ways that you lose is if you go through the whole deck, you kind of mix in this Archfiend guy and he seems to be, I'm assuming he's the final boss, I don't know. But for now, there's no way to attack him or do anything against them. And if he shows up, you lose the game. So that's one of the ways you can lose. All right, so I did that. I'm gonna simply just gamble here and put another power token. You know what, we're gonna do this just to do it. We're going to use this memory of, sorry, memory of basic, memory of heart. And we're going to use one additional available action. And we're just going to use this fight now. Get rid of this power token and get rid of the nymph as well. Means that I will tilt this explorer instead. And that is it for my turn. I have no threats out, so I take no spirit damage. So this is all just going to reset. And that is it for the turn. So we'll draw a new threat, a new threat. And uh, we have a healer. So this is a four influence action. Here, when played, I gain a spirit. Interesting that I get healed when she comes out, but she still does damage every turn. And then I get the memory of redemption. This is a two influence. Might be, might be a good time to just use it right now, just to get rid of that card. We'll see. And I still haven't figured out like what's a good timing for some of this. Like, should I be using the cards immediately? Should I be trying to hold on to them? But I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, I think we are simply just going to use this right now on this influence action. And it's going to make it a four. And we can just influence her right out so we don't take any damage from her. And then we will heal one more because she heals us one more when she gets removed. And so that puts us back at maximum spirit. And then I think I will just simply put a power token on the fight action and that's going to be it for the turn i believe one two three four one of the next two cards is going to be a key so let's see so this is going to be a key this requires a four explorer which is perfect because i have a four explorer available and then we do have this silk power flip keys also add one power influence token to influence so this, this particular key, the, the keys that are randomized, will give me one power token to my influence action. So I guess I'll get two out when I decide to flip it. So for now, this is just going to come out. I'm going to draw a card. This is another heal. So I have two heals. 
I'll just stack it like that for now. And for my turn, I'm simply just going to use this explore for four. And then, oh, this was supposed to go away last turn. This is, so this is used. And then I'll tilt one for the charm. And I get this key. Forget how I did this last time, but I'll do it like this. And I'll put this key right here to be used at some point. I will reset everything. Please stay. So now we have one more, a goblin. Goblin simply is a coward on defeat. He gets removed from the game and it's a four fight. Seems like in the beginning, everything wasn't lining up, but now things are lining up and I have a four fight available. So actually I have to get my card first. Memory of gold, no more spirit cost, negative one threat this one. So that's like another defensive way to negate some damage. I'm going to use this fight. These are going to slide up. And I guess I will tilt. I'm going to tilt one on the influence just in case. Because uh, I don't think I'm going to get a key yet. And this guy's going to go away. And he's removed from the game. So we're going to put him off over here. And we'll reset everything. All right. So now we have a new. We're kind of on the second stack now. We have a pariah. He, when he gets defeated, he's going to go to my discard. We've seen him already. Memory of Blood, basic memory. So this is a two fight card. So we'll put this here and I will simply just use my influence with one power token. Him, he goes in my discard and I will tilt this fight action. I'm sure one of these fight actions are going to get removed at some point. Still think it's the better play to just kind of keep it queued up. It's gonna get reset. Okay, so remove one power token from your explore action. I don't have anything on my explore action, so we are good there. And let's see. Memory, this is a charm. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm at six memories here. So, or six, six memories. So I'm going to have to start discarding down after this. So we'll see how that works out. But I will simply just use this power action. Wait, that's in the two position. Realized, okay. Hopefully I haven't cheated. I don't think I've cheated, but yeah, I just realized this is not in the right position. I don't know if I actually did that at all. I feel like every time I needed the three, it was in this. Hopefully I haven't made that mistake. Probably very easy to do if you're not thinking about it. All right, so I'm gonna, well, I don't wanna do this. One charm. I don't wanna use this for this. So you know what? I'm gonna do something I don't normally do, but we're going to do it. I'm going to spend these two power up this fight to a four. Since I'm going to be at max cards anyway, I have to start using them. So this is one of the things that you can do. I forget what the term is for this. Combine. Combine memories to add power to action. So I'm combining these two ones. Basically give this a free power token. And so this is going to be one, two, three, four. Power token will come off. And that will get rid of this nymph. And then I will simply this to give it another. We have another key. So this is an Explorer 8. So we are going to have to start getting a lot of Explorer out. So that's good to know. I don't remember there being an Explorer 8 from last game, but now I know that that's that. Um, let's do another memory. I can use this to get one more available action. So that's good to know that I have. Hard as I try to keep this like parallel, it always seems to tilt. There we go. All right, so I'm not taking any damage this turn. So I think I'm simply, I think I'm still gonna prep myself for threats. And I'll use this for now to remove these. And I'll just get another memory. And I just got a memory of might. So this is a plus one. So I'm just gonna put this underneath this. So this is kind of like my power, healing, swap any two, charm or influence and an available extra action if I need it. Maybe I'll regret doing it that way, but I feel like I'll power this up while it's low and by the time it gets up, maybe we can get that key. Fighter, bruise, when played, remove one power token from your influence. So one of these goes away. And yep, this one's, well, let's get another memory card as well. This is the upgrade one, return a threat in play to the top of the threat deck. So we don't want to return this guy. But maybe when we get somebody who doesn't have a played ability, maybe we'll return them onto the top. 
Could also return the key to the top, I guess. But I don't know if that, I don't know why I would do that. Anyway, I am going to use this memory of might to add one power to this card. So one, two, three, four. And you're supposed to do it like this and leave it on. I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a gameplay reason for that or if it's just for memory, but for now I'm just gonna discard it immediately so I don't do it as an extra step. But you are supposed to put the card here and then clean it up at the end of the round. There might be a reason for that gameplay wise, but I don't visible to me to, to know why that would. Anyway, he required four to go away, so they're gone. And stated before, I'm going to start boosting up this explore a little bit. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is it for the turn. We will untap this, get a new threat. Okay, so we have our first foe requires five influence or it requires both five influence and five power. When played, I have to discard one memory. Okay. I think we will simply get rid of this heal since we are at full health. And we will draw a memory plus two power, which is pretty useful for us. I know what I am doing. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and add this for five. And that's going to take care of this first influence. Now, because it has a star next to it, I have to do both of them before this ogre goes away. And so this is going to drop down. And then I think I'm going to use this memory of knowledge, swap the position of any two actions, swap the fight. And then I'm going to use a memory of blood, which gives me two fights here. And I'm going to tap this. And that's just going to get rid of the ogre. And the ogre would heal me for one, but I am at maximum spirit, so I don't really get a benefit from that, but the foe is gone. And the foe gets removed from the game. One of the, the ways to spawn the portal is you basically have to have all five keys and all the foes have to be defeated before the portal can, can spawn. There's three foes for this vignette. That's one of the three gone, so we'll put him right there. And that is it. We will add another explore token. We will put these in the discard. We will untap these. Still have this key sitting out there. And we have a new threat. The Mad Watcher, another foe. So back to back foes. So I guess we're now on the third stack. So this one's interesting. You can reset one key, which means that I have to use a key to really take advantage of it, which we might end up doing anyway. So if I understand how that works, I basically can use a key. Normally you can't get your key back once it's flipped, but resetting a key will let us do that. So since I have one key, I might as well use it, to try to defeat her. She's a little bit difficult because she requires three levels of influence and explore. So I think what we're going to do, well, actually, well, let's get a, a memory. We get a, a basic one fight memory. So we'll put this under here like this. We will very simply first use the influence with the power token on it. And that will take care of the three influence. Then we still have to do the two, the one, and the four explore. I will use this key immediately to use a second action, which will be this explore action. And I'll have to get rid of one of these power tokens. Take care of that. So it's going to be two full turns before I can finish her because I can't reset this. I don't have any ability that lets me reset that. So she is going to be doing one damage every turn that she's out. That's just something I'm going to have to deal with. I could flip this to get a power token or influence, but I don't know what the next threat's going to be. So instead, I'm just going to tap this. This actually should be here and now be here. And yeah, that's it for the turn. She's going to hit me or she's going to drain my spirit. And yeah, as far as I'm aware, I don't lose spirit for the key, even though it's a threat. So hopefully I'm not misplaying that, but we'll, I'll have to look that up as we go. Pretty sure I don't lose threat for the keys because otherwise it would have that symbol on it. So anyway, we have a new threat coming out. This one played this card to power token. So that power token we just got is gone. Oh, just realized I can choose this power token to go away from anything, couldn't I? But I'll still take it away from the fight. Um, no, I'm going to leave it on the... I'm going to take it away from the Explorer, sadly. And I'm simply going to do the following. I got to drop my memory. 
swap it the position mini two. So I get this back. And I will first use this fight with the power token that I saved. And that will remove the guy that just came out. And then I will use this influence, which is a three, but that's okay. And I'm going to do that with use one additional available action. So that will take care of the two. So I just have to do one more influence to get rid of that. And then I will just explore to get back that power token that I lost. And that's it for the turn. Outcast feet placed in the discard. So he's going to take up a spot in my discard pile and he does two damage. So unfortunately, I think now is the time. Well, let's see, let's see what card I get first. I get a two explorer. So that will be useful soon. Get that key. I think one, two, three, four, five. Now is the time I'm going to flip this key over and I'm going to put out a, what does it say? I do actually put it out on an influence and then put it out on because of the silk. Okay. I put a second one onto the influence. So I have three on the influence. So it's influence, influence, double influence for this. It would help if they put the influence icon on here. For some reason they don't put it on there. So for some reason I thought it went on fight, but I have to remember the word power does not mean fight. For some reason I, I may, I combined that in my head. So first things first, we will use this action. Wait, I don't think I took damage. She, she hit us last turn. So we're up to 18 and then use this. I'm actually going to swap the position to any two actions. Yeah, I'm actually not going to use this key yet. We'll hold on to that for a second. We'll put this back. I don't know if it actually matters, but I don't know if there's any weird threats that remove more than one thing. So I'll just wait until I absolutely need it. But instead I'm going to swap the position of these two. You use this as a two influence to remove. He goes to my discard pile. This is going to swap back down and that is it. Oh, no, that's not it. I'm going to tap this for another explore. And then she's going to drain me for one. I'm down to 17. This is going to reset. And then a new threat's going to come out. It's another one of these guys. So I think that's all the prize I'm going to get. So I kind of wish I did it the opposite, but I didn't realize there was another, another one was going to be coming up, but it's okay. I think we can, we can deal with this. I think this time I'm going to use this to put two here and I didn't draw my memory. Let me see what memory I got first. It's just a simple one. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to just use this or it's one, get rid of her. And that's going to flip this key over. And this is the second foe that's gone. So that's two of the three foes that I got to defeat. He's going to slide down. What happened to my memory? Did I make a mistake here? Did I use it? I don't remember using this. Return a threat play to the top of the deck. Why is it in my disc? I feel like I put the wrong. Oh, I used it for the, the one charisma. Forgot. Okay. I was going to put him back on the top. So he'd come out again, kind of misplayed that. I probably could have used this, but I don't know if I had that earlier. So too late to fix that, but yeah. So he's going to stay out. He's going to do one damage to me. I do get two health when she gets removed, but I'm going to lose one from him being out. And this is going to get reset. This is going to get reset. And I think that is it for now. We're going to see what comes out. All right, it's another key. This one lets me add a power token to an explore action. Well, this kind of works out because, well, let's get our next memory. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a influence two. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do the following. We're going to use this explore with all three tokens. Get this key. So now we have two keys. We have one that gives a bonus to my explore. One that gives me bonus to influence. And then we are going to, all right, due to some technical difficulties, I lost like five minutes of gameplay. It didn't really miss too much. I went through the next card and it was either a goblin or it was another pariah. I don't remember which one. All I did was I ended up using my power token or my fight to slide this down. We flipped over a, a second key. So that's where we're at now. 18 health. I'm not going to worry about trying to recreate that. It wasn't anything too crucial. I'm pretty sure 
got the foe removed before the recording stopped. So yeah, we're, 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 we're good there. So we're just going to continue on. I was shuffling my discard deck or my player hand, my, my memory deck because I was out of cards. So there are four dead cards in here. That's going to make me get memories a little bit slower. So I was about to draw in memory for this turn and already, I already drew one of the dead cards. So there we go. All right. So I have four explore here and I have two, two, two explore cards. Now I kind of wish I, I did this sooner because now I'm going to have to go through this whole deck to get these two explorers and these might come in handy for, you know, getting out of the portal later, but it is what it is, but we're going to use four plus one power token plus the three on the explore to get that, that third key that's out where that's been sitting out for a while. So this was an explore eight. So now I have three keys. I have this key right here that I've already tapped to get a free action. And then I have both of these. This one gives me an extra explore or it gives me an extra power token to explore. This one lets me draw a memory when I need it. And plus I can get my free actions for tapping them as well. I think we're going to move this, this round phase over here now. This is going to be in the shiny spot that I got to figure out with my lights, but yeah. And then I think we're simply just going to power up the fight action and that's all we're going to do for the turn. Our next foe should be coming up soon. And then that's all the foes. And then all I have to do is get the, this key and then the last key that comes up and then I can try to get out of the portal. So, so far, very straightforward, no, no, no surprises, but I'm sure something will happen. So this is a fighter threat, a bruise, one played, remove one power token from your influence action. So did remove one of those. Requires a fight four. And um, I do have this, so I think we'll simply just fight them with the power token that I have on here. We'll remove this power token. And I did forget to draw my memory, so let's do that real quick. I drew a swap the positions of any two. So they're going to go away. And we're just going to start powering up this explorer because we can try to get that other key out of the way. And that's it for the turn. New threat, another nymph. So remove one power token from your explore action. I don't love that. All right, so I think we are just going to simply swap. I might just take a damage this turn. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to use this to, and this is an explorer. I'm in handy shortly. I'm running out of room cards here. And yeah, I think we're going to get a power token for this turn. I think we're just going to take the one damage from the net. Might be where things start getting worse for us, but we'll see. But we have we have all this. Do stuff with it if I need to. Let's see what comes out. So let's untap this. This should be the ogre. No, so I don't know where the other ogre. I guess the next card could be the ogre. So when this comes out, I have to discard a power token, but this one can be, and I think I'll simply just get rid of the influence token because we're gonna get a lot of bonus influence tokens from all these keys because of this silk. And uh, let's get our memory. We're gonna get one, and we have three influence cards in our hands too. So I think now is the time where I'm gonna use some of this. So I think I'm simply going to do the following. I think I'm going to swap the positions of any two actions. And I'm gonna swap this with this. And I'm gonna use the power to remove this nymph. And then I think I'm gonna use one of my influence uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap one of my keys to get an extra action. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to tap this key. I'm going to use this to power up this for three to get rid of this Aramite. And that removes both of them. So I'm not going to take any spirit damage this turn. And then I can start powering up this Explorer. This is going to go away. And this should be the Ogre. I feel like this is the Ogre. Okay, good. So this is the Ogre. He's a 5-5 five, five again. And when he comes out, I have to discard one memory. I think I'm just going to discard this one charm or influence. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to get a memory. So I get that for free. This just lets me heal. So I need five influence, five power to be able to. I think what we're going to do is we're going to let him hit us a few times. And I think we're just going to get this key 
So we're going to play this plus one to explore, power this up to a five, and we're going to get this key. Then this key, when I use this, so I'm going to flip this, this key, this key is the one that lets me add an influence. And when I do it, I basically get to put two influence tokens on this because because of the silk. So that gives this, and then I will flip this one. This lets me draw a memory. And this lets me use one additional action. Uh, and when I do that, I'm gonna get an extra influence. I'm going to use this use one additional action card to just use this. And you know what? I'll do, I'll just keep this. I'll just use all three of these tokens since I have them. And that's going to let me deal the damage to the, or influence the ogre. I still have to use the damage to be able to take care of that. And I don't have any power. I do have a plus two power to memory of blood. I forgot I've been holding onto this for a while. So I am just going to use a third key, turn to use an available action, to power this three power up to a five. And then this will go down. So I've used all three of my actions and that's going to get rid of this ogre. And he's going to heal me for one when he goes away. Puts me at 18 and now I have no threats on the board. I need one more key to be able to go through the portal and then I win this vignette. So this feels easier than last time. I'm not sure if I'm misplaying something, but you know, I'll have to rewatch and see, but I think I'm doing this right. So yep, a new threat, fighter. He removes a power token from influence. These all get reset. I don't have any power tokens out right now. He is a power five though, so he's gonna be out for a little bit. I can swap any two positions. And yeah, so I think I'm just gonna get hammered by him a little bit. I think now's the time where I start losing some spirit. So we're gonna simply power up our power token since we're gonna need it. And we're gonna use this explore to get another memory and we got one power so that's going to be useful and he's going to do one damage to us for the turn and we're going to try another threat these are going to reset when played remove one power token from a fight action so that undo that is what i did last turn now i need a lot of fights so now things are not i, I just said how this was looking easy and then now i'm going to start taking a lot of damage well, we get another memory. Let's see what we get. We get another heal. So I think we're simply just going to fight. Or we're going to add a fight token. We're going to use this influence. To draw another memory. One, two, three, four, five. This is another dead memory. So I don't get anything from that. And everything is tilting again. This is all going to get reset. Take two damage. Now I'm down to 15. So I have one, two, three, four, five memories, two keys to play around with. Let's see what we draw this turn. So another remove one power token. So this is getting weird. So we're gonna lose this. What can I do? So I think I'm gonna do something weird. I think I'm gonna use both of my heal cards combined to power up this power. And I'm gonna add this one here to give this a power of five and we are going to use all this to get rid of this fighter i could have healed but instead i'm going to use it and now i'm going to flip this to give myself a power token on the fight and a power token on the influence so that's my third key use and i'm going to turn this to use an additional action but before i do that i'm going to swap the positions of any two actions. So I'm going to swap this influence with this explorer, and I'm going to use that to take care of this guy, this enforcer. So now we're down to one enforcer. It's a little bit more manageable. We're just going to simply add a power token to that. And three of my keys are used. All I have left is this key, and we're going to take one more damage. We're down to 14. Hopefully that's mischief managed, and hopefully the key shows up. We have a healer, so when she comes out, she's going to heal me for one. And then when she goes away, she heals me for one. But she is a charm five or influence five, so I got to figure that out. This just lets me ignore a spirit cost, so I can like take one less damage for the round if I want to do that. Um, 
I think now what we are going to do, we're going to use this explore, get another memory, and this is another dead memory card. See, I told you that's going to happen a lot. We're going to use, oh, we're not going to use that because I don't have a way to use the second action. So we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to power up. We're going to power up the power again. So I have ways to get influence for this. So we'll just power that up. And we're going to take two more damage. So we're down to 13. I could ignore the damage, but I'm going to hold on to this in case we need to boost something. I have enough health left to, or spirit left. Sorry. So the next threat is the key, which is an explorer seven. So there we go. We're going to need those explorers to get through this. And there's only a couple of cards left. So the Archfiend is going to get mixed in. So we have to hope we don't get really unlucky there. So now we're going to draw our card and it's a dead card. This is all going to get reset. Okay, so first we are going to use our power to get rid of him. Slide these down. Power four. And I don't have a way to do another action. So I'm just going to start powering up this explorer. And we're going to take another damage down to 12 from the healer. The key does not damage us as far as I'm aware. And I don't, oh yeah, I did draw the memory. Okay, that's it. The next threat comes out. Fighter, remove one power token from your influence action. I do not have a power token on there, so that actually works out for once. So, so let's look at our memory. It's going to be ignore spirit cost again. All right, so we're going to use this memory of redemption to give plus two to my influence, which means we're going to go after this healer. The healer is going to go away. We're going to heal one, and we are going to simply boost our explore. Three, four, five, six. And that's it for the turn. So we're gonna we're gonna lose our spirit now from the spider that's sitting out. And another healer. So when she comes out, we, we get a spirit. But now that's it. Now when we have to have another foe come out, we're gonna have to mix in the arch fiend and hope that they don't get mixed in at the top, which is unfortunate if that happens, but not much I can do. We do have another memory. This is use one additional available action that could be super useful right now. So I think what we're going to do, we are going to actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to use our last key here. And when we flip it, we're going to add one power token to the explore action. We're going to get one on our influence because of the silk power that's for this vignette. And that's going to put me at three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to use that action to slide this down. And that's going to get us this last key. And, um, now I have two ways to use an available action. I can use this and I can use the memory. I will use this first so that I'm in a position to flip this if I need it. So we're going to use this fight action for four. And that's going to get rid of the fighter. We will just flip it right away to gain one spirit, 13, and we're going to end up killing this healer. So we'll add two, put us at 15. And when we flip it, we're going to get an extra influence and I'm going to use my use one additional available action. Another round where we use all three of our actions to get rid of the healer as well. And I already healed. Myself. So the portal comes in. So that's good. And basically, as long as I don't die now on this next card it is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one in 18. I think my count is correct. I'm going to win on the next turn. So I have to hope that in my mixing, I don't put the arch fiend on top. So I'll be very upset if I top deck a one in 18 chance arch fiend. So this is all going to reset. We have all five keys. Just reiterate one, two, three, four, five. All foes are defeated. And then we just have to escape through the portal with a four explorer. And I have the ability to boost it right now. So we forgot to remove the ogre. So it's a one in 17 chance. That is not the Archfiend. That's so when he comes out, I have to remove a power token from my fight action. I don't have one. This is an Explore 3. This is what I drew. I'll do it just to use it. Return a threat and play to the top of the threat deck. Combine these for one power. Make this four. We're going to tap to Explore. And we are going to... And that's it. That's the Vignette 2 of Veil Wraith. Again, it's weird how I feel about this game. It feels very on rails to a point, but it also feels good. Like it has like, what's what happened to 
well, I just lost my game for some reason. I have a feeling my battery went on my phone, so that's awesome. But yeah, I guess we'll do this then and we'll hide myself. Don't need to see the game anyway at this point. Yeah, so it feels kind of on rails, but it's obviously not. There's, there are choices to be made, but it also feels like, okay, sometimes a card comes out and removes a resource and sometimes it misses. Sometimes you, you choose the right resource. Sometimes you get the right memory. I don't know, it has a very solitaire, like, you know, the actual solitaire playing card game, you know, 52 cards, you know, trying to get all the aces through King. It has a sort of feel like that, but with a fantasy theme layered over it. So kind of interesting. I don't know if it gets more complex. I don't know when, if once we start getting more powers, if things are going to start. Since I lost my feed, which is again, something I have to figure out. This is the story. This ends with the watcher sees only the rending, her twins cursed with rage never ending. I don't know if like these formulate a poem when you get through them all. First one was, this was from the first vignette, sorry. In life, the ruined goblin was king beyond death, wielding sickness and sin. Yeah, maybe I'll just leave these out every game and we can just read it as we go down. But again, I don't know. It could be that I'm not smart enough to understand the narrative or what the theme is going for. Um, like I said, the art on the cards is pretty, but everything seems very detached from what we're doing. Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe it's all supposed to just feel very dreamlike. You know, a lot of these foes look like they're helper. Like, you know, like if I saw this nymph, I would not think that they're going to attack me. Like this guy looks like a bad guy, but this healer, like, why are they a bad guy? They're, they're healing me. Why are they a threat? I don't understand it. So there's a little bit of disconnect there. But anyway, because I lost my feed, the only other thing that I have to do is I have to pick a second upgrade for the chapter. I think I just get another card. There's nothing special happening yet with the upgrades. So next time I record, I'll show the upgrade that I got and hopefully I won't have any issues with losing my camera or losing the feed partway through. Like I said, we lost about maybe three minutes of gameplay uh, yet. But if you like this, please send me a like, thumbs up, subscribe, comment. I will do a review on this on my website and eventually a video once I played more of this. And then I do think I'm going to try Creel Manor when it comes in as well, right after, so I can kind of compare the two. Hopefully this gets more complicated. I don't know. I haven't really looked ahead on the cards. I'm still in the base game. The first five games are kind of the base game. And then there's like another 15 that are part of the expansion. I should think it's also weird how they did that, but we'll get to my thoughts on that later. Anyway, Wackasm, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.